Ah, uh, finally, we get to talk about shortstops up next on Fantasy Baseball Today in Five. Welcome into FBT in five and happy Halloween. I am Frank Sample dressed as Dustin from Stranger Things, joined by Scott White. And let's take a look at Scott's way too early top 12 shortstops for 2025. The first group of four includes Bobby Witt Jr., Mookie Betts, Gunnar Henderson, and Ellie De La Cruz. Scott, I think it's going to surprise some people that you have Mookie Betts over both Gunnar Henderson and Ellie De La Cruz. Why is that? Yeah, I uh, I don't know that I'm going to stick with it. I can already feel myself weakening in my resolve. But my thinking there, uh, particularly bets compared to De La Cruz, is just you know you're going to get first-round production from Mookie Betts. He never misses. You can look over the course of his career. There have been some stretches when the power numbers were down, when the batting average was down, when the, the stolen bases were down. But the the sum of his production is always right where you want it to be. And that's been true for so long. He's still in his early thirties. He's still in uh, batting near the top of one of the best lineups in baseball. And there just isn't a lot to worry about there. While um, again, for De La Cruz, especially there's, there's, there's some downside risk that, uh, that we're not going to have time to get into here. But if you listen to the full length co- uh, podcast, you'll hear all about it. There is also a versatility angle here because Betts, in addition to shortstop, he's eligible in the outfield. Shortstop is very deep, even in a roto context. So you're most likely going to draft Betts to play the outfield, and and that adds to the value. And also, the weakest position, the weakest non-catcher position anyway, second base, very good chance he regains that at some point in 2025. So um, if, if only as a tiebreaker, I think that's worth considering with Betts. All right, the next group includes Francisco Lindor, Trey Turner, Corey Seager, and O'Neal Cruz. O'Neal Cruz, very solid season, very quiet, 21 home runs, 22 steals, one of 19 players to go 2020. We know he's a freak out athlete, loaded with talent, obviously has his warts, struggles with plate discipline, and is bad against left-handed pitching. Uh, but, Scott, it kind of feels like 2020 is the baseline. We're still waiting for that huge breakout season from O'Neal Cruz. Yes, we are, and you know, the deeper he gets into his career, I think the the more reasonable it is to to uh, approach him cautiously, um, to not just assume he's going to take that next step forward. He did just have a 2020 season. It may have been the most low-key 2020 season ever, or at least among them, because it felt like a disappointment given our expectations for Cruz. But he's only 25. Uh, the early stages of his career were sidetracked by injury. So he's he's kind of a, a young 25, you could say. And there's still a lot to like. Uh, he hits the ball just, just looking at peak exit velocity, max exit velocity. He hits the ball, technically speaking, harder than anyone. And um, there are a couple others maybe in the conversation if you want to brought it out to beyond just the single hardest hit ball, but Cruz is right up there with the elite power hitters in the game. And if he can just elevate the ball a little more, 40 homers is very much on the table. So um, I rank him with some optimism for next year, not as much as the past couple years, but I rank him ahead of like CJ Abrams and, and Willie Adamas. All right, well, let's talk about some of those names. 9 through 12 in your shortstop ranking, C.J. Abrams, Willie Adamas, Zach Neto, and Bo Bichette. A very interesting group. Adamas coming off that career year, now entering free agency. We'll have to see where he winds up. Zach Neto had the breakout season, 20 homers, 30 steals. Feels like maybe early on in the drafting and ranking process, People are not buying into that completely. And uh, Bo Bichette just had the worst season of his career, mostly due to injuries. Will he be on Toronto? I think there's a good chance he's traded this offseason. So, Scott, very interesting final group here, uh, rounding out your 9 through 12. Yeah, and I want to focus on Willie Adamas especially because 10th might seem low given where he finished this past year. And based on some of the, the mock draft results, very early mock draft results I've seen circulating on the internet, 
it seems like Willie Adamas is going much earlier than this. People are kind of taking his 2024 at face value. And I don't really understand the justification for it because Willie Adamas has been around for a while. He has an established baseline. In 2024, he went well beyond it in a way that's not really backed up by the underlying numbers. It's not like uh, the skill indicators improved for Adamas, and yet he hit a career high. He set a career high in um, in home runs. His batting average was uh, near a career high, 251, certainly the highest among his three full, full seasons in Milwaukee, and especially the 21 stolen bases, completely out of character for Adamas. He had never even had double-digit steals before. Maybe in this new stolen base environment, he was a year delayed in taking advantage and, and he could turn into a consistent 20 steal threat. I, I, that's in, within the realm of possibility, but I think more likely uh, Adamus doesn't run as much next year, reverts more to the norm for him. And probably the other numbers come down as well because, again, the skill indicators didn't improve. And the previous two years, Willie Adamus was more like a 235 hitter with. Uh, with upper 20s homer power. Um, if, if he does that, and that should be, like that should, that, that's the most reasonable explanation, explanation then obviously you'll, you'll feel pretty dumb if you invest like a third or fourth round pick in him. All right, for more extensive fantasy baseball coverage, listen to the Fantasy Baseball Today podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or anywhere else podcasts are found. Thanks for listening to Fantasy Baseball Today in 5, and we will be back again on Saturday. Bye-bye.